Yeah. And we're going to talk about it yeah. for a little bit. And then we're going to talk about the Jacob Chicken and Shane Goss's fair trades. Um, thank you all so much for tuning in to the PHNX Coyotes post game show brought to you by the one and only DraftKings Sportsbook app, America's top rated sportsbook app. Don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe wherever you get your podcasts, and leave us a five star review. I'm Leah here with Craig and Petey. This was not last night's game. Let's just say that. Yeah. Okay. Great analysis. Petey, cool. thoughts? Mm, yeah. Okay. Good. Great. The Ducks are tied 1-1 one, one in the second. Yeah. So that's good. We're watching that's that. Nice. I, I don't know what you want to say about this. Well, like, the, the truth is this team, first of all, you went through all the emotional stuff of the trade deadline today. And I know those guys weren't on the trip, so it really shouldn't have affected them. It's a back-to-back. They traveled. They got in late. And you said, oh, well, they're tired. They had 2 nothing. What the there yeah, were shot. Star was like what, what? was that shot? Twelve to three, and they were ahead two nothing. Two two goals on three shots. Typical Coyote hockey. Absolutely typical Coyote hockey. And then Dallas said, "You know what? We're first place in the division for a reason, and we're going to show you why." And they turned it up. They were just way better. That was a great summary of the game, actually. Yeah. Should we move on? I'm good. <laughs> second period. In the second period, I I went into the bathroom and realized I was having a really bad hair day. <laughs> That's your analysis. Of Buddy, that's every, I quit the hair day thing back when I was like 21. Yeah, like, but when it's every day, too, a bad mostly, day. You but do like, have a lot of hair. I, who, yeah, but it was like, worse, I don't know what was going on with it when I walked in the bathroom. Who had a worse like, wow. second period? You guys, it, and the other part of this is that none of you said anything to me like, Craig, you, you I know, didn't notice. You know, you, who had a worse second period? You good. or Nick Schmaltz who took a puck oh, to the jaw? Wow. Definitely Nick Schmaltz. I hope he's okay. Yeah, we really hope he's okay. That was tough. Wow. And a lot of people, their initial reaction, because we've heard his name in trade talks, like, uh, yeah, oh, but trade talks. <laughs> but see, <laughs> we're like, so no if, more, if, I know we're going to we're dabble. We're going to go in and out of trades and, and games. So Nick Schmaltz gets hurt in the game. Yep. Nick Bukestad didn't get hurt, hurt in tonight's <laughs> game. Because you know why? Because he's sitting on 599, didn't play his 600th game tonight. He was taking a timeout, according to his agent, Ben right. Hankinson. But so he's played 599 career games, <laughs> kept him out. Did he get traded tonight? No. Nope. No. Did Schmaltz? Nope. No. But he's hurt now, so guess who isn't getting traded? I don't really think Nick Schmaltz was going anywhere anyway. We'll get to that in a little bit. Okay, I'm just saying... It would just to keep everybody out. Why don't you just? Why don't all the NHL teams for the week before the trade deadline played just their American League roster? Why don't we do that now? I've never seen such a thing. I that, know. Trade that every, related trade reasons. related reasons, and I'll, I'll blame Bill because they were the first club to do it. Yeah, Trends trade related out of lineup. Trade related reasons. There are so many players out league wide right now. Trade related reasons. I don't. I remember seeing that once or twice. I mean, Taylor Hall did it. Jack Eichel did it, but Jack Eichel was hurt, couldn't play. Right. Trade related. Protect the, play. Asset. Protect the yeah. Boogie's in that lineup. The Coyotes win by a dozen. Oh boy. And then he'd, he'd be go. your DraftKings. He would be. Game. I've already voted for you today, Boogie. Sorry. <laughs> well, King the King good news is there are no more games before the trade deadline for the Coyotes. So That's Boogie true. Will have to sit that out is true. Again. So that was it. That was and and you look at the Dallas Stars team when they turned it on, and they sporadically turned it on today. They 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 did not play sixty minutes. And this Dallas Stars team is really good. Uh, offensively gifted. They play fast. Your secondary scoring is Jamie Ben and and Sagan. That's your secondary scoring. Yeah, you're you're all right. They get a lot of points from their back end. You got Heiskanen's playing great. You, um, and who's the guy we liked? What's the guy's name we liked? <laughs> Hakenpa. Oh, hey, the name Hock we Hock liked. Yeah. I was like, Hock what? Pa. Yanni Hakenpa. Yeah, that's a yeah, great yeah, love name. Love that name. That's a great name. That's like an all NHL. When name when Ottinger's that. on, he's as good as any goalie in the league. I I don't know if you know he's had some injury issues this year and consistency issues a little bit, but if he ramps it up for the playoffs, he's as good as anybody in the league. This Dallas Stars team is sneaky, and I, I don't know why it's why we don't see them as much, or or we think of them as flying under the radar in first. You, you know, it's always Colorado, New York, um, Boston, but but this team's really good. Yeah. Yeah. And they, they have to be one of the teams in the West that you look at and go, okay, maybe. I know she didn't mention Toronto. Who? who? Yeah. <laughs> the first round loss, Toronto. I mean, by the way, buddy, I, I'm sorry to break the bubble. I know they're making all these trades. They they trained, tr- traded. They've added more than a quarter of their roster in the last six days. That's a big adjustment for anybody. If you add one player to a mix, you can imagine adding six. It disrupts the room. It disrupts your lines. You've played with these guys for 50 games, and now we're going to give you six new players? Good luck. By the way, oh, yeah, and you're still going to play Tampa. <laughs> Yikes. So, yeah. That's, Sorry, that's, that's for my, another day. Yeah, it's just that day. And if you survive it, Boston. 
Nice. Right. They're not the surviving east, it. The East is no, wild. Not. Tampa wins. Yeah. Sorry. Tampa is going to be another first round exit for the yes. Maple Leafs. Oy. Then what? Wow. Oy. Okay. Spend more then money. what? Yeah. Is, are we, well, let's talk Dallas. Yeah. So Dallas was, sure, Ingram was great. Ingram was great. Again, like he, there were moments in this game you're like, the, the, like Sagan hit the knob of his stick as he's going down in an empty net. And he, he was so flabbergasted and stunned that he went and picked Ingram's stick up and almost congratulated him for making this. Like, like he went to, buddy, really? Like you stopped that? Like it wasn't like you're an asshole. It's like, wow, that was unreal. Yeah. When you have your opponents doing that, you're playing really well. Ingy's been great. Yeah, he's been yep. unreal. He's really he's kept them in it every game he's played. He's kind of been that solid, yeah, dependable one. Not that oh, not that Veggie isn't per se, but Ingi, you know, he had a tough start to the season and he's really leveled out his game. Do you just go into next season with this tandem again? Just say why not? Guys? I what's Ingram's contract status? He's a RFA. Yeah, well, I why wouldn't yeah. you? I, I kind of think so too. Like just bring these two guys back. Yeah. yeah, especially you're not trying to win next year. Well, but I mean. They've been the problem with winning too that much. That is the problem. Yeah, but yeah, I think it's great. Get the ten back. Then if not, get, then they, trade them. They work trade well together. They play well together. And, and are with the quick trade last night, are there more goalies getting traded? The answer is yes. Um, Corpusalo moved to LA, but you're going to see more goalies getting traded. There is that's yeah, not the last goalie trade. Maybe quick to Las Vegas. Yeah, maybe quick to Vegas. To Vegas. Wow. I can't and say I, Las Vegas. There are people kicking they don't the go tires. By Las Vegas. They just go by Vegas. I don't Wait, know why. Can you do that if your city's named Las Vegas? No. Like, why do you do that? You know? I've, I've wondered that. Uh, like, he if plays for the York Rangers. Yeah. You know, the York Rangers. What? Before the show, I said that my head was starting to hurt. And then Craig said, Don't worry, you're sitting between the two of us. And you know what? Is it Tampa Lightning? <laughs> yeah, maybe. But the or city's Tampa, though. Maybe it's the Bay Lightning. But the, I don't know. but the city is Tampa. It is. It's Tampa St. Pete. But the team is Tampa Bay. All right. Figure it out. All right. I mean, yeah, I'm just going to go out on a limb and say that either way, they're still going to be wearing blue jerseys and wearing, playing hockey. <laughs> <They're>, <laughs> what <did you> say? <laughs> I don't know how much it matters. Look at this. DP Sean. dropping some truth. Oh man. Okay. Let's get let's this. get through our something. Let's get through something. Oh, you don't want to continue this one? No. Okay. Let's get through our conversation about the game. Let's look at the how about numbers. The Angeles Kings. What do you think of okay. that? Okay. We're gonna look at the numbers and then we're gonna look at the keys. And I'm Kay. saying it now by hold, I'm holding myself accountable by saying it now. So Craig missed that whole argument yeah. yesterday. So by Jose Sharks. So Sorry, the numbers. I'm still going here. Okay, so coyotes. <laughs> Crazily I do outshot. like calling the Sabres the Burrs. But yeah, that's like taking sure, it the not? York Islanders, as Charles yeah, says. Okay, no okay, I'm done. I'm done. Um, Coyotes outshot 41 to 20. Classic. Um, special teams. Coyotes one for five on the power play. Dallas one for four. This is kind of just what the numbers we're looking at now are kind of just the opposite of what they were last night, which is the Coyotes out shooting Chicago, the Coyotes having a good, successful penalty kill. Um, but yeah, that, that, it's just the Coyotes' way. It wasn't their worst game. It wasn't their best game. It was just Dallas, a game. It was a game. No, it was a game. Dallas was better. It, when you look at the numbers, that's a Coyote game. Yeah. Oh, shot 40 to 20, and you were still ahead at points in this game. Like, are you out of your mind? They got, they, the faceoff circle, not even close. Power play. By the way, that Keller shot, that was money. It was. Off the pipe and in. And the move, too, right? Yeah. Drag. Just, yeah, dragged and found. Yeah. He scored opening. 25 goals. He th 30 is... Thirty is within want to see, his yeah. grasp. I Note do want to these see little things within the season. Knock on wood. Thirty is within that sight. That he stays healthy, but it's completely. Kraus is still stuck on nineteen. But we're going to see. Yeah, he's been a little quiet lately. But yeah, there's still twenty games left. So we'll those milestones, and that's what we're going to look for over these last twenty is little things like that. Great power play. They scored. Keller looked great. The Schmaltz injury is going to hurt Keller's performance for sure. Right. They're, yeah, they're they're the, that if tandem out, together. Right. Yeah, if he's out. yeah. If he's out if for any extended period of time, those those two have played extremely well together. You got to give it to Clayton Keller putting up these kind of numbers on a team that doesn't score much. And by the way, I don't know if you noticed, they don't shoot much. We, have we ever talked about that? Teotis, <laughs> six game point streak for Keller too. <sighs> by the way, the Carolina Hurricanes, north south. There is no Carolina. Oh. <laughs> You were gonna break. Wow. Right. Well, that's I thought you were trying to break. I swear they're trying, trying to appeal break. to I both like states. The I don't know. I they're they're trying to drag <laughs> south and north together. Traded for so. Jack. I thought they. Were, I thought he had a thing. I know. That's true though. Like, what's up with that? Yeah. Like, 
Just saying. I'm a big geography guy. All right, blatantly huh. asking, who is this Jacob Chikrin? I don't know. Huh. Um, all right, $5 super chat from all techs. Need GMBA to keep you so that the black Kachina I order that arrives in April oh, lasts. Yeah, oh, my God. Lasts at least four yeah. or five games. Sorry, I keep bringing it up. Did all techs, did all techs, did he see the, 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 the thumbnail the today? The placeholder thumbnail. The placeholder thumbnail. It had a picture of Cassian. Cassian. Just for you, all techs. It was. Um, while how, about, uh, how about the Lewis Blues? Yeah, someone in the Nicholas okay. said it in the Doing comments. It already. Right. I think we've exhausted it. Here. I think so too. Um, I'll while, keep thinking though. While we're talking about <laughs> success and happiness, let's talk about Barrett Hayton, who scored his tenth goal of the season tonight and has set a new single season career high in points with twenty five. So maybe not the crazy breakout season we kind of discussed he would have before the season yeah. started, but definitely has had a better season. And we're starting, I think, to see that line with him and Keller and Schmaltz really start to gel and click over these last couple Hopefully of weeks Hopefully we'll get here. to keep seeing it if, yeah. if Schmaltz is healthy yeah. because, yeah, it's been nice to see Barrett Hayton producing. We've, we've talked about this so much. And right? where is he always? Where is he? He's at the net front, always. Yep. Yeah. Like, he gets he gets to the Which places. those guys. Yeah, it's He attracts defense. A defenseman has to go with him to the front of the net, which opens up those holes, those seams in behind. Because of him, Keller and Schmaltz are able to do what they do, even if he doesn't show up on the score sheet. And yeah. tonight he does, but but there are but he times also set that he the screen doesn't. on Keller's goal. So 100. Yeah. percent Yeah. So he was contributing tonight um, when the Coyotes were having success and led all Coyotes with five shots. Yes, and for those reasons, Barrett Hayton is tonight's DraftKings King of the Game. So congrats to Hates, one goal, five shots. It's as uh, Andre calls him. It's it's <laughs> and that's for you, Kenny. I know you want to see more crowns on Barrett Hayden's head. So um congrats to Barrett that. Hayden for being been yeah, he's been well. he's been beating that down. <sighs> and before I forget, PD, let's, let's go over your but, keys in so the first segment. Can you Craig believe doesn't, it? Craig doesn't know the beef. We have some beef. And over then the, the funny and then so, a funny thing happened today. A funny that. thing happened with the key. So the key is yeah. I'm just gonna give Craig everybody else is letting you just change the station for just a second. Like explain it to station. Craig. The keys are <laughs> always part of the, the keys are always second. We do we do the numbers by the numbers when you're at the rink. We do by the numbers and we do P's keys always. It's just yeah. a thing. The last two shows <laughs> literally forgotten. We're, we've done the punch card. <laughs> I'm and like, I'm not making follow that up. us on Twitter. We're done. Please, follow us on like, Twitter. Uh... I'm like, buddy, I put that. Like, can we do this? <laughs> it's true. And I send them to there about nine in the morning. Ten sometimes sometimes noon. And the tweet goes out like five minutes before the show. So this morning, I'm going to get it out early. I promise it's going to go out early. I texted him back. I was trying to be. So it's going to go out Because I like to put something along with it. The shows I've done more work than can fit in a, in a five-word whiteboard. And then something happened. A funny thing happened on the way to the tweet. Okay. Chicken. Ah, uh, okay. So I get the call on the way to the thing. Um, your tweet didn't go out. And I'm like, par for the course. I just it didn't. It, Keygate. It, I was reading the room Keygate. on Twitter. You know? mm. So, so <laughs> without, further ado, without further ado. Let, okay, all right, right, moving on. Well, let's go to the chat while we show you these keys. Survive the start. Do you think so, Leah's doing this on purpose? Or <laughs> or do you think that? Do you think that? Do you think the key of uh, surviving the start? They're up to nothing. Is I don't that know, buddy. I don't pay attention to your keys. I know it's true. You don't. We do it before you get here because we don't want to p defend it's the rush. Like the show notes no. with you. Ingram defended the rush. The team didn't. They did win. They did win the first. They win the first. They did defend the rush. Big Ben. I, I think they actually, did they keep Big Ben off the score sheet on a night like this? They did. Holy shit. Wow, so they two were actually. Three, two out of three and a loss. Wow, that's rare. That's the first time. It's very rare. That's very and rare. And Ben has been absolutely in Fago. We talked about him, him his um, secondary scoring, heater. Absolute heater for Jamie Ben. And I tell you what, he looks fast again. I, uh, anyway, I wouldn't want to play his team in the playoffs. And guess who won't? The Coyotes. <laughs> wow. Nor, neither will Toronto. Yeah, they they, yeah Toronto's not going to play Dallas in this playoff. Nope. I'll take that. I, if anyone wants to, I'll take that on the DraftKings Sportsbook app right hey, now. But what if Ottawa goes to the Eastern Conference Final? Hey, Another wait, first round some, pick. Some condition. Sorry, would... ahead something, of something. We get are ahead on now, by the way, everybody in the chat, we're rooting for Ottawa to make it to the Eastern Finals. Yeah. Or to completely fail, but not fail so hard that they get, get in top, the top five. five. Yeah. You want six. Yep. Anywho, any other thoughts on the game? Um, Not really. Really, no. No. Okay, great. Um, I Did think... anybody fight? No. no. Last night was a back great game, back. by the way. Back you know what I'm saying? I'm going to say one more flowers. Can I? Yes. Nick Ritchie. Three shots on goal. He had hits tonight. I haven't noticed Nick Ritchie on the ice in weeks, maybe months. Where we, That first month, he was a factor on the power play. He was offensively in every game. You noticed him, and then he just disappeared. 
And I have to say, tonight was the first night I've noticed him in a while. Whether it's Bukestad's absence that's increased his ice time, or he wants to leave on Friday. <laughs> I, I don't know. But I noticed him. Yeah. So there's flowers. Good, good shout. There good go. shout for Nick Ritchie. Um, I feel like... <laughs> Craig, Craig's like... <laughs> I feel like the vibes, we need to get our vibes in check. We need to do... We need to get our vibes in check. Is there a fan in here? Before... But- before we get into yeah, the, the beef of yeah. this, which is well, the take, trade take talk. Take off the uh, coat, I know. buddy. I, don't, I didn't want to do that. And you guys, okay. I have a surprise for both of you. Uh-oh. It's, <sighs> it's, a, it's a new partner and possibly a mid-show pick-me-up. And it is a freaking snack cart. It's a Circle K <laughs> snack cart, in fact. Um, hello. Look at DP. Sean <laughs> is like a <laughs> flight attendant. <laughs> Any snacks in the trolley, dudes? Um, we're so excited for our new oh. partner. Oh wait, that's you all day. No, I'm already, I'm already no I want I want salt and vinegar chips. They're on the other side, I think. Um, we. <laughs> well, well, hey, sir, can you not grab from the cart? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Let Sean serve you. There they are. Metal. Thank you, thank you so much. Oh, um, thank you. I'm, I'm good. But I, Oh, I'm well, you know, I'm should I try chips. something there? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, some, we got peppermints. We got I'm opening shakes. this. We Not good for audio, gummies. but. Oh, we'll be able with the cherry gummies. Cherry gummies? Yeah, my kids All right. are going to eat these when I get home. I went kettle right, Thank you, sir. Thank you. for Thank you, Sean. Um, we're so excited to partner with our friends at Circle K. As you can see, they're providing snacks for us and for our oh, office. Chips are bad. So what did you get? Kettle cooked? I want just a kettle cooked. Kettle cooked classic, salt and vinegar. I went with cherry sours. Love it. Um, so watch my face as I put this in my mouth. Unreal. We love Circle K. And to kick things off, you guys, we've teamed up for an amazing giveaway opportunity. Take out your phones right now and text PHNX to 31310 for an opportunity to win a $500 gas gift card. Please do this because Espel was on here talking oh, yeah. so much smack earlier about the Sun Show. So make it a Coyotes fan. Make it one of Please. the Coyotes diehards that gets this. Yeah. Yes. He Seriously, literally said, oh, you, we want it to be Suns, not Coyotes or Cardinals. Stop watching us because the rest of the show is going to be really boring, or at least the like, no, next not. five minutes. <laughs> That's PHNX that number. 31310 to win a $500 gas gift card. See the show notes These for details. Really, good, by the way. really excited. It's about just regular chips? Part. Kettle? Yeah, but just plain kettle. Salt and vinegar is my favorite, by the way. By the way, if you didn't see that, well, we won't get too in deep to this, but we did, shoot the, we did shoot a little promo there. Yeah, I'm great actor. DP and I went down. DP, were we money? We were like one take, well, you yeah. and I, but oh, yeah. Max sucked. I mean, everybody else. <laughs> the sales guy? <laughs> take we were, hot. I mean, I started to feel Jacob Chikrin. It's tough being on a team full of losers. Right? <laughs> yeah. It's just a winner. <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> you are so right. <laughs> All right. Well, I don't really had one line. His line was, Twenty dollars on five, <laughs> and he messed that up. <laughs> he didn't so, even make the video. So I, he didn't make the video, <laughs> and he spent Max, Shane's twenty dollars. Max, I am gonna throw you under the bus. Shane gave him a twenty dollar bill as a prop, and he gave it to the cashier, and she <laughs> and she gave put it him in gas. The, yeah. At a prop he wasn't even at, so we had to run skit. out and and back up to it was the a skit. <laughs> he just said twenty on five, and she goes okay, and she punched it in. And <laughs> <laughs> and it wasn't even his money. It was, it was Shane's. All and right. so then he had to run out and move his car to the pump that he just said to put <laughs> gas on. And we just said five randomly. So he said he had to go find five. That was a true story. Sorry, Max. Oh, that's hilarious. Well, Max, you owe Shane $20. And if you want to win that money to give to him, you can do so on the DraftKings Sportsbook app. Um, and right now, basically, if you bet Clayton Keller over half a point, you're going to probably win some money on DraftKings. So download the DraftKings Sportsbook app. Use the code PHNX. New customers can bet $5 and get $200 in free bets instantly. That's only at the DraftKings Sportsbook with code PHNX. Minimum age and eligibility restrictions apply. See show notes for details. What? Did you see what the clip? Somebody said the cart should be named. The Jacob Chip Run. Chip Run. <laughs> Chip run. <laughs> well, that's Chip a great. Run. That just tees us up nicely, blatantly. So we appreciate you. Um, yeah, the Coyotes played a game tonight, but what's on everybody's mind is the trades the Coyotes made. If you missed it, we had an emergency 
live show earlier being today. being invaded here, by the way. What? You're being yeah. invaded. This is how you can tell Craig doesn't spend a whole lot of time in the office. Yeah, yeah I know. <laughs> we, just, we just let things slide. Um, if you missed it, we had our, our initial reactions to the Jacob Chicken trade, but we'll get into it a little bit more here now that everybody's had a few hours to process what happened um, and to process the return. Um, Craig you know, gave some insight on the reasons why the Coyotes were in the situation that they were financially and maybe why yeah. they couldn't make those big deals that we saw with Nashville and with Chicago. Um, and I think there's just a couple, you know, narratives out there regarding the chicken trade and the return um, that we want to address. Sure. So I've kind of, I literally scrolled through Twitter and found a few common themes um, and I thought I would just bring them up and we can kind of address them one by one. Um, again, for more in-depth reaction to the chicken trade, check out our earlier show. Um, for yeah. And I will have a story on this yes. on Friday, not tomorrow, because I'm going to wait until the entire trade yes. does, deadline wraps up. I'm trying to talk to some other people, including hopefully Jacob Chikrin, but yep. he's busy right now. Yeah, he is. But I think, so just to summarize, obviously, Jacob Chikrin traded to the Ottawa Senators in return for a conditional 2020, 2023 first round pick, um, as well as a conditional second round pick. Um and, and, and there's just a lot of conditions on this trade. And a 2026 second round pick. Um, and that second round pick, the other one was 2024. So I think a lot of people were expecting maybe multiple first round picks. Prospects. I don't know why anybody was expecting multiple because Bill, it, it, the, the price is all along has been two firsts and a second or the equivalent of that in players if teams didn't want to give up that many draft picks. But initially it was about the draft picks because – Bill's a scout. He has the scouting staff. It was two firsts and a second. I don't know where people got anything more than that. That was always the asking price. Yeah. And actually, Bill Armstrong today in his press conference after the trade um, was asked about this because this was one of the common themes we saw. Why weren't there players involved? Um, but Bill Armstrong spoke to the media today about getting just draft picks in return. Uh, our aim was more to acquire draft capital at this point. Um, we've been in, uh, as you've seen last year at the draft, you know, we were able to walk out of the draft with three first rounders and a host of other picks. And, and we were looking to do the same here. This will give us a chance for uh, uh, two fairly high picks in the draft in the first round. And you can really make some hay when you do that as an organization like we did last year. And we're looking to do it again this year. Um, it also helps us plan out. Uh, the rest of our, our rebuild um, and adding picks um, in 24 and in 26. So that just helps uh, further stock our picks for uh, future drafts. Okay. Aside from the idea that they didn't get players, let's go all the way back, wind back to what I just said. Initially, when the first asking price came out for what they wanted for Jacob Chikrin, it was two first in a second. And then – as, as we, we went along, it be, became clear a team might want to move uh, a first-round pick that they already have. Well, it had to be somebody that the Coyotes liked, first of all. It's not just, oh, he was a first-round pick, so you'll take this guy. It has to be somebody that their scouts actually like. But the initial desire was just to get the draft capital, two firsts and a second. They didn't get that. They got a first and two seconds unless something crazy <laughs> happens, which I don't see it happening because I don't even think Ottawa's getting into the playoffs. Um, the other thing that I had mentioned was if this trade did not happen by the deadline and they got to the draft, Bill Armstrong might be okay with just one first if he knows that that first is going to be a higher pick. I've used the example how many times now? Say somebody comes with the number 10 overall pick. That might be enough because you know it's a high first round pick instead of, you know, when you're dealing with, say it's Carolina, a team that's going to give you a pick in the late 20s to early 30s. If you get two of those or you get the number 10 pick, what do you want? I mean, you want the number 10 pick because that's you got a much better chance at getting an elite player there. And if you have those other two picks, you might try and package them to move up in the first round. So don't freak out that they didn't get two firsts. Look at listen, if, if Ottawa gets into the playoffs, then this gamble doesn't pay off because you could get a lower pick and it doesn't look like you got requisite return. We don't know what's going to happen there. But the other really important thing that just keeps getting dismissed, it can't because it impacted this trade enormously. The Coyotes could not retain salary. They couldn't take anything big coming back. We are in a flat cap era where tons of teams just go on cap friendly or Puckpedia and look at how many teams 
are really close to the cap, where if Jacob Chikrin moves in, could they absorb that without moving something back out? There just aren't that many teams. So when the Coyotes cannot take back salary, that's a problem in negotiations for a trade. They're going to limit their options and they're probably going to drive down the price. Is that Bill Armstrong's decision? No, it's not. This is an ownership decision, and we can we can dive into that further, and I plan to dive into that further, that thinking, because on the one hand, you get that this team is losing a lot of money. They're playing in a college arena. They don't have a lot of other ancillary revenue sources right now. They're not a good team. There's a lot of things that are going wrong at the moment for them from a revenue standpoint. So from that perspective, you could say, okay, I get it. Ownership doesn't want to spend. Flip side, though, if you're hamstringing your general manager in his efforts to improve your team down the road, when that improvement would likely also lead to more revenue, is that the right approach? Is this a penny-wise, pound-foolish approach? That's something that we should be examining because you really need the team to get better on the ice. If the Coyotes don't improve substantially, it doesn't matter what else happens because in this town, you have to win. And when you're limiting your general manager's ability to do that, that's an approach that should be questioned. Well, well said, Craig. And one thing to tie, kind of tie into this when we're talking about where that draft pick is, and Craig and I had this discussion on the way into the building today, that we, Carolina is the perfect example. Carolina, let's say they're the president's trophy winner, get a long way in the playoffs, and you're getting the 29th overall pick. Or Ottawa, in this case, right now is the 12th pick. If the if the draft were held today and nobody moved on their ping pong balls, Ottawa's 12th. You get the 12th pick in the draft. Yeah, The 12th pick versus the 29th, that's, it's massive. And, and I'm just yep. starting to do just basic numbers. In the 2020 draft, there are eight players that have over 100 games already. All eight of those players are in the first 18 picks. Not picks 20 through 30. And you could, it, it's, it's, Every year it's yeah, like that. And, you, and, and there is the odd guy that's second or third rounder. Right. So th you that is going to happen. But if, if you, you want to find the guys that have the most games played, the most points and the most goals, they are in the top half of the first round. Mm -hmm. So that pick right now of Ottawa misses the playoffs. And I believe Ottawa will and the Jacob Chicken boost, whatever. They, they're not making the playoffs. They have to jump over three teams. They're not making the playoffs this year. So you're looking at a team. You're picking in the top 16. Yeah. Without moving up in your ping pong balls, that's that is a good player versus you want to get twenty eighth and uh, twenty sixth and twenty eighth. What's more valuable? Mm -hmm. it's, it's not even close. And there's a lot of analysis too of the percentages of players that whether it's make it to the NHL or play hundred games in the NHL, and they do the the math by rounds. But I've I've talked to a lot of agents, and I know some people have started doing this as well. It's really not even the first round. Yeah, yeah you can divide the first round up by first half or even by thirds and look at how the percentages change as you drop down in the first round of the yep. draft. It's significant. Yeah, and so that's why this I pick is it. so important. And I, and I think it's interesting that, and I've heard that from other people, this pick, yep. this is one of the few teams that were in the Jacob Jickren sweepstakes that were not going to be a playoff team. So that automatically puts you in the top 16. Yeah. So yeah, that's a higher pick. That That's the top half of the first round of a very good draft. That's a good pick. Yeah. And I listen, I don't want to lay it out like, did the Coyotes get the perfect return for Jacob Chikrin? Probably not. But again, consider the mitigating factors here. When you can't take back salary, what are you supposed to do? Like, look at all the other deals out there. Look at what Chicago did and look at why they were able to do it. If you tie one hand of your jam behind his back, what's he supposed to do? I, I think he came out okay, given the constraints he Kane was facing. Kane got 50% of his salary withheld. 50%. What's that? Kane. Wasn't that 50% of his salary withheld between Arizona and Chicago? Yeah, and the, the Coyotes only have 25% of it. It's like less, less but, than 200K. But the point is, they got a third you're seeing it. Go back and look at all of these bigger deals. Yes. Somebody's taking the salary somewhere, whether it's a broker through a third team or that team retains yeah, and some. That's, I'm glad you said it because people are like, well, well, they retain salary in Kane. They retain salary in Shea Weber. How much? That's a nominal amount. First of all, Kane is less than 200K. So don't even come at me with that. That's I mean, that's ridiculous. And then with Shea Weber, it wasn't it, just it, it's 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 not a lot of money. They actually save, save money, money over Dyson Mayo. Yeah, and beyond money. that, they know that they're going to make the cap floor now while they're yeah. again stripping this thing down and, that, and the running. Shea Weber, you talk about real money and real cash money out of the cash register. Yeah. It was it's less than Dyson Mayo. Yeah, it was less than what they lost in Dyson Mayo. So they actually saved yes. money in that deal, so, and that wasn't going to happen in the Chicken deal. 
And I also think just all of that aside, and you know, we we sat here and Bill sat here and said, you know, if there was if there wasn't the right deal, they could wait till the summer or they could wait till all his contract ends. But we've been talking about Jacob Chikrin every week for a year in this yeah. regard. And I can't I have to say it's a little bit of a relief for it to be over. And I'm sure it's a relief for everyone. It's a relief for Chikrin. It's a relief for Bill Armstrong. It's a re- like it, it's a relief for many people involved. And I'm not you know, I'm not saying that he wasn't a good teammate and a good friend and he we saw his play on the ice um when he did play the season he improved he was great but clearly there was a disconnect between the organization and the player whether that was one way or both ways it's done and now we can all move on and move forward yeah and that uh, that leads me to one more thing that i that i need to say and, and um, um this is not going to be to denigrate a player on his way out because jacob chicken did some amazing things and honestly i loved his story from the day he made the roster as a barely 18 year old on a Dave Tibbet roster. That's, that's an accomplishment. You you don't do that. And I remember his reaction. He didn't even know that he had made the roster, but tip told me, and they hadn't even told chick yet. I walked down to talk to chick as he's walking out. And I remember his reaction. He literally said, Holy smokes. That's unbelievable. He had no idea that he had made the roster. (laughs) And for, for so long, I thought Jacob Chikrin was a core player here. I mean, it was, not too long ago that we were talking about him as the one untradeable piece. I know. And that he was going to be the next captain. Yeah. yeah. We talked about that we, here, too. Yeah. He did amazing things here. That 18-goal season was spectacular. I thought he was really good again this year. Having said that, there are some executives around the league that are not high on Jacob Chikrin, and that factored into this as well. There are some people that don't think he's as good as the hype. So we will see what he is able to do. Jacob Chikrin is still young to me. And when people find holes in his game, I think he's a defenseman and I know his work ethic in the off season. Like he works at things really hard. Could he shore up maybe some of the areas of weakness that others think he has? I don't think it's out of the question with how, how dedicated he is to his craft. So, I mean, just wish him well, wish yeah. him well in his new situation. Hopefully he thrives. Hope he's happy yeah. in Ottawa. You know, I, yeah. I, I did get a chance to talk to his dad, Jeff, and he's Thrilled that he's, you know, both his kids are living in Ottawa. They have the cottage in Arm Prior. There's there's extended family there. So it's a cool situation for them. So just wish Jacob Chikrin well. Hope kid, it works out. Craig. Yeah, he's exactly. a kid. Exactly. He's played seven years in this league. He's a kid. He he's is. got so much of his career left. Yeah. This is, Leah made the, the point. Everybody won here. I, I think the Coyotes win. I think the, the, the player wins. I think Ottawa wins. I think the locker room wins. Everybody wins. Everybody wins. Let's move on. Yeah. Let's talk about Bukestead. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> oh, I jest. I'm sorry. Um, uh, blatantly asked night and said, Ottawa needs to stock up on raw liver. Oh, <laughs> what's going to do there? It's going to be frozen. <laughs> oh, but man. do you think Glendale was a tough ride to the rink? Ooh, <laughs> oh, boy, it's so howdy. funny that he's going Kanata. from this and then it's kind of that they're also going through an ownership. Right. And change. where's his family from? They're from South Florida. So the other option that people looked at for a long time was him playing In for Florida. the Panthers who have the other, the third Awful arena situation. We have to drive all the way to Sunrise. That's funny. Yeah, but the drive knows? to Canada, though. Oh, it's brutal. That's tough. No, I've no, there's everybody there. It's there's dark. It's nothing cold. out there. I've there's never been, nothing out but there. But I've been to Ottawa, and I will say it's a great city. City's underrated, great. Underrated. I like Ottawa. Underrated, cool. Ottawa's a great yeah, town. Very great. Cool. Yeah. Too bad they don't play there. They don't. They yeah. play in Canada. Um, <laughs> we had a super, ch- another super chat from All Text. Um, said. A handful of Yotes fans are upset with the deals. I'm not. I fully trust GMBA. I've seen firsthand as a St. Louis fan what he's done. Just give it time. Yeah. I mean, that's that's a nice Pollyanna view. Yes. Listen, <laughs> again, there were there were there were constraints here. So did Bill get exactly what he wanted? No, he didn't. But yeah, he he's is a scout by trade. He, he is doing the best he can. And he again, they invested in this scouting staff. And I know you're drafting 18 year old kids. So to a certain extent, it's a crapshoot. But I honestly believe this is a good scouting staff that this franchise has. So and, put it in their hands. Give them the chits. And that and brings up the other narrative I saw today, which was trading away great players for draft picks that might not work out. And it's, you know, it's a risk that you take and you look and you look at, you know, GMs like Kyle Dubas who are sitting here trading away draft picks saying, you know, we know what our players are. We don't know what those players are going to be. The Coyotes aren't in that position. They're in a position of looking toward the future and not the future next year, the future five, 10 years 
from now. So they're in the position to take those risks and gamble on the future. And you can't draft your next great player if you don't have a pick to draft that next great player. And the Coyotes aren't in a position right now. And I was saying this to Sean earlier. The fact that no players or prospects came back, that's fine with me because this team isn't in that win now no. position. Like when when the Coyotes traded for, you know, Taylor Hall and say what you want about how that whole thing went down, but that was like, okay, this is a player that can help us win and that's yeah. exciting. Right now. We're not yeah. in that we're not in mm. that state not even close. right now yeah. for this organization. So for no players or prospects to come back, it's like HK for me because that this it's almost the same for it to be picks instead. And like you just said, this is the best scouting staff this team has ever had. And these scouts are, I mean, they come from Tampa Bay. They come from St. Louis. Those are scout, a scouting staff that won Stanley Cups. Yeah. And now they're working here. I think, so we got to put a little bit of faith. I think people, and I, and I get it, but they just, oh, this is just the Coyotes. This is just typical Coyotes, and this has been going on forever. So they just keep drafting. You keep pushing the future down the road. I get that. I get how frustrating it is from a fan standpoint. But. You can't blame this current management staff for that. They had nothing to do with it. So what do you want them to do? Say, oh, my God, that this is how it's been done here in the past. So we need to speed up the process. No, that's what you can't do that. You have to do it the way you believe is right. And that is by just stocking on draft capital and prospects. That has been his that that's who he is. That's who Bill Armstrong is. And he brought pe people in around him. To accomplish that, you have to at least let his plan play out before you judge it. You can't judge Bill Armstrong on what has come before. But that's the problem, Greg. We, we've we said this about this organization before, and we've seen this where they, this is the plan. We're rebuilding, and then we're not. Yes. And then we're getting anti rent to Derek step on Phil Kessel, Taylor Hall, and a rebuild. Don't. Just don't. And that, that's the difference right now. I'm buying in as long as you stick with it. And right now they're sticking with it. And you talk about, well, Jacob Chicken could still be there. Okay, let's call it like it is. Gunther, Cooley, this year's draft pick, whoever that may be. Michelli, J.J. Mosier, Valimaki. These guys are 22, 19, 18 years old. Yeah. They're not winning next year. They're not winning the year after that. They're not winning the year after that. Yeah. So we're talking four years from now. By then, Jacob Chicken is now 29. And where it, I like Jacob Chicken. I think he's the best hockey he's ever played. His best two way hockey is this season. Offensively, two years ago, two way this year. But when he's 29, where his injury is going to be, where his number is going to be, where is his give a shit meter going to be in this market, this is the right move at the right time for this team right now. Yeah. They have, they have assets for the future, not. You talk, we talked about Keller and Schmaltz even. Keller and Schmaltz four or five years from now. Schmaltz definitely. He's twenty seven. Yeah. Like uh, to to extend that. Like if they don't deal Schmaltz now, and I I really don't think it's going to happen because of the money. If that happens in the summer, don't be surprised at all because Nick Schmaltz's trade value is never going to be higher, and he's twenty seven. You heard Petey's timeline right there. They ain't winning the next few years. So Nick Schmaltz is in his thirties by the time you're even thinking about winning. Does it make sense to keep Nick Schmaltz, or does it make sense? To, to get, get the, the asset draft. for yes. the guy that's going to play with these other guys, and that's why I'm not worried about the goalie today. And I'm, I, I think Ingram and 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 Veggie are great for what they're doing right now. Are they going to be the guys taking this team to the promised land when the parade's going down Mill Avenue? No, they're not. Sorry, it's going to be somebody else. I don't know who, but it's not going to be these guys. So yeah. it just it's okay as long as your scouting staff drafts right. You develop those players. You put them with a coaching staff in the American League that can help them to win. And they've got those three ingredients now, by the yep. way. And and then you surround them with the right players here when you're ready to win. All of those things need to happen. Edmonton did it with the draft picks without the surrounding cast. Didn't work, right? Yep. And I will say this because I want to backtrack on one thing you said about um, the scouting staff. This is the best scouting staff this team has ever had. I, I but take a step back once, just because there are some really good people that have worked here. And when you look at what happened under Don Maloney's watch, they had no budget to do that because yeah. the legal and the team, there was no scouts, yeah. scouting staff. Yeah. Like there wasn't. It just hasn't been a complete scouting staff like it is. Right. Now. That's what I would but say. Be because, yeah. because the general manager and the ownership have both decided together as a team that that's important. And yeah. that means scouting and development are, are important because without the ownership and the manager believing in that model, that model doesn't happen. And under the John Chica era, 
that wasn't important. Development was, but the scouting wasn't. And under Maloney, I think it would have been more important, but there was no finances for it. They had a, they had no scouting because the legal in the team. So now you've got yeah. everybody that's all in yeah, for all of right. those Complete steps. Complete would be a Complete. Word. I don't mean to disparage no, no, the and, scouts and, that came before. No, and I just want to clarify yeah. that because yeah. everybody believes that that's the, the plan and the yeah. program. Yeah, absolutely. Um, okay, well, I want to give Ghost his his time too. Yeah. Sorry, we've been talking a lot about Jacob Chikrin today. It is... The big move. But before we do, when I picture that parade down Mill Ave, I picture yes. us standing on one of the buses with four peaks beer. We're not going to have a float? Uh, it'll be the, float. the four peaks Craig, float. Craig will be on the we'll front float. float with no, it. We'll, we'll get the van, the four peaks van. <laughs> and we'll oh, be buddy. on that. Sweet. That yes. would be sweet, imagine? actually. Yes. Wowie yeah. beer. The wow bus. The wow bus. Are you kidding? That is I'll in the parade. Well, the Craig will be with the Stanley Cup up front with the ownership. <laughs> In their PHNX <laughs> locker championship shirts. Um, anywho, I just, I, I automatically thought about Four Peaks. Um, but, you know, I don't have to wait till then to drink it because you can drink Four Peaks anytime as long as you're 21 um, and buy it wherever you buy beer. And our friends at Four Peaks will be out at the M3F Festival March 3rd and 4th. That's literally this weekend. So grab your ticks at m3ffest.com and enjoy a wow wheat beer while you're there. Must be 21 or older to enjoy responsibly. Do they have Four Peaks in Ottawa? Eh. Nope. Whoops. There. The Didn't think that won one the train through. for that reason yep. alone. Didn't um, think that one through, did you, Jake? So yesterday, and I don't, you know what else they don't have, PD? No. Illegal Pete's. No, they do not. So yesterday, <clears throat> we, Sean and I went to Illegal Pete's you before the game. Story? I am going to tell a story. You are. Wow. Okay. Um, by the way, I know there's probably a few of you watching. I believe Major Nelson and his wife went to Illegal Pete's. Drew went to Illegal Pete's. There was a whole crew. Like, we now have kind of a, a thing. Illegal Pete's is a great pregame meetup because it's five minutes from the arena driving um, and it's walkable. Anyway, you all For know. Some, yes. You all know how much I love Illegal Pete's. We do. And what do you like specifically? I there? love the queso. But it's not just the queso. I love their food. Yep. I love their drinks. I love their bar. So Sean and I go yesterday. And I said, can I please have a side of queso? And they were out of queso. And I have to say, it was one of the more heartbreaking moments I've had. Um, as far, you know, all these trades that happened this week, this was the biggest loss for me. Mm. Um, and I looked at Sean in a panic. I, I know. We all, by the way, we all did get that text. I didn't know how yeah. to react. Leah said, I'm heartbroken. I'm like, oh, no, what happened? No, they just didn't have queso. <sighs> But that just goes to show how, how many important. people love it because they all ate it. But Very anyway, true. I'll let it slide illegal Pete's and I'll order a double serving of queso next time I go. Um, but I, man, I just love it so much. And if you're looking for a place to uh, check out March Madness and watch it, Legal Pete's is a great spot for that. Um, so nothing cures that my bracket is busted in the first round feeling like mm. fresh limes tequila and agave so you can try out illegal pete's coin premium or frozen margaritas and stop by for happy hour 3 to 6 p.m every day sean and i were there during happy hour yesterday you were cut short by cut my, my request short by craig requesting no that reason. we get to the arena and yeah. when does the tournament start by the way um march 14th march 14th is it 14th 15th 16th and 17th for the first weekend pretty sure it is oh what's happening then craig oh as a matter of fact, on March 17th, it's St. Patty's Day, and I'll be having oh. a party. So oh. the tournament will be on at my Shoot, house. Shoot, I just sent out invitations for the first round oh. watch at my house. <laughs> yeah, I also am having a first round watch party. But it's on at those Craig's, dates. It's at Craig's house. Yeah. It's at Craig's house. You saw the screen today. You saw I saw the one. I did. I love the You saw the screen that the, uh, yeah, that the, the tournament will be on. Oh man! When we when we talk when we talk yeah, for yeah I know I the saw first the time today it feels like we've been. Do you together still far think I'm much. going? Yeah, you are coming, buddy. Because I'll drive. Uh, all I'm going to say is, if you don't show up, you know who you'll have to answer I know. to. Yeah. And it's I'm not already me. have to answer to her already. Yep. All right, we're gonna have it like it's gonna be a showdown at the front it door. Is. <laughs> <laughs> I'm filming. We're live streaming. <laughs> She's gonna be sitting there with food right at the front door. <laughs> do do do. <laughs> a little showdown. <laughs> Are you doing the good, the bad, and the ugly? Yep. What the yeah. heck is happening? I like it. All right, Shane Goss is fair. It's time to give you your uh, flowers, your, your flowers, your time. Um, Shane Goss fair, obviously, also today traded for a third round pick in 2026, which seems so incredibly far away. Um, this was another one where there was some narrative on Twitter. Thought we'd get more was a common one. Thought we'd at least get a second rounder was another common one. But do not forget that when the Arizona Coyotes first acquired Shane Gossespierre, 
that they gave nothing in return, got Shane Goss's bear, and got draft picks. Second round pick and a seventh round pick. Artem Duda was the second round pick. They're very high on him and what he's doing over in Russia right now. So when you think about Shane Gosper getting traded away to Carolina, don't think of it as Shane Gosper for a 2026 third round pick. Think of it for this 2022 second round pick, a 2022 seventh round pick. Was it a 22? Mm -hmm. And the 2023 uh, 2026 third round pick all the there numbers blurring together I don't know why people um, are freaking out that they have to wait on that too like well I wanted it right now what are you like uh, that's like my kids I, I, I if you're gonna do it with Carolina <laughs> if you're gonna do it with Carolina you don't want this year no. yeah no because this year's first is a second this year's second is a third yeah. three years from now their third might be a second who knows think about it that's why they spread plus he wants to space out the draft picks over several right. years well another thing that bill armstrong has said repeatedly we want to make sure that all of these drafts are yes. stacked with picks in the there top three rounds so that you have this continuous flow of prospects coming through but there's but, a, there's another reason too and you said it earlier craig it was just between us but the market for defensemen at this year's trade was deadline was they were in like there were so many defensemen available. These other teams came into it. Teams like Washington came into it that you didn't expect to be in the market and started flooding it with players. So suddenly there were a lot of options and basic supply and demand. Greater supply. It'll Not be interesting be to see how he's received in Carolina. And I don't mean as a person in yeah. the room because he's a veteran guy and he's going to be fine. This is a team that's on fire. Like this team is playing extremely well. Yeah. And they're in first place in, in the East and, they're in their division, and I don't know what this does. And you look at their back end, they defend extremely well. I'm not even convinced. We'll wait and see where where's he fit. Like, I don't know, I don't, I don't we'll know where his fit do. is. I'm curious what they're going to do. And you know what? We're going to find out on right Friday. at Mullet Arena on Friday. Yep. I cannot believe that his first game is here against but the Coyotes. But now, and hear, hear me out. So on this team that you've got Calvin DeHaan, Chatfield, Brady Shea, Pesci, Burns, and Slavin, Somebody's got to sit out, and that's their core, and it's been their core all season. And somebody's going to have to sit out that's been a part of that team for the entire season up until this point. And what does that do at this time of the year? I don't know. And we're going to find out. We'll and see. that's where you have to be really careful about these trade deadline deals because Toronto's sitting with nine defensemen right now. And guess who was scratched tonight? Who that? Connor Timmins. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. The savior of Wait, the Toronto that's Maple Leafs. That's right. Wasn't he getting the... The Norris? The, the, the and, Norris. And by the way, Toronto went with seven defensemen tonight and Connor Timmons was scratched. Was not one of the seven. Stop. <laughs> thank Stop. you, Sean. <laughs> yes, thank you. Season sweep of the Toronto Maple Leafs, yeah. if you forgot. Stop freaking out about little moves like that, Connor But that's, Timmons, that's something to look Connor at. Connor Timmons all, isn't going to matter. For all of these players, is where do they fit? Where do they fit in the roster that they're just going into a room that's doing very well? And that goes for any players going to New York, Boston. You talk about Patrick Kane. Patrick Kane is taking someone's job. Like someone's sitting out. Definitely someone's sitting out for Patrick. So Kane. I don't know who's sitting out for Ghost yet. I'm curious about that. Yeah, we'll, I am we'll too. See. But I like Ghost. I, like, I do too. I think I, it's a I, good pickup there. Yeah, I, and I think he can provide something for you. Yeah, he, he showed that he still has those abilities that he that he showed in his first couple seasons in Philadelphia. Ghost has a little bit of an edge to him too. Absolutely does. Like, like the guy, but he also has a little bit of an edge, a competitive edge. I'm happy for him. It's a good situation, and and I know he's thrilled because I got to talk to him. And he's going to like playing their style of hockey because this is a team that skates yes. extremely well, and they're pace. they're aggressive on the puck with fast pace in all three zones. He can play that style of play. He is going to be a good fit in Carolina. I'm just curious to see who they sit out of their lineup, and we'll find out on Friday. Yeah, and like you said, you had a chance to speak to him. A great quote um, from him about his time in Arizona. Um, he said, I got an opportunity to redeem myself career-wise by coming to Arizona and getting my career back on track. It's something I'll never forget, the Arizona Coyotes and what they did for me to prove to everyone I'm still a good player. Definitely a little bit of validation. Yeah. So really nice to hear, really nice words about Arizona and his time here. Um, and also, I, just another interesting quote that yeah, he said, and I'll read that. this, that you... That's that, the balance. <laughs> yeah, that he said to you. And and I and I appreciate that he acknowledged what the franchise Love did. candor. Yeah. Love candor. Yeah. Um, he said, it's definitely a fun place to live and play to. There's obviously not a lot of pressure. That's something you miss as a player, and we all want one day a chance to win the Stanley Cup. I'm thankful to be put in this situation to help go help a team do that. Yep. Do we, got, do we have to start being more... Uh, pressure on this show we're like covering the put coyotes. more pressure on the put coyotes more pressure on them yeah. yeah i don't think that's gonna matter for the next few <laughs> years so we have a long way to go to catch up to toronto and vancouver media as far as applying oh. pressure to a team and yeah. we got to shout out the gossip bears because they are the family of frenchies thank you and the 
Shane Gossespierre and his Frenchie and his wife Gina were in studio last year <sighs> with their yep. Frenchie, and I will miss. And I appreciate he brought that up in his comments. We have to figure out what we're going to do with the Frenchies. The Frenchie quotient dropped in the in it this, really did on the Coyotes, yeah. and that depresses me. You know, I don't. I think the Armstrongs got a second. If they I'm, did, yeah, they did right. And, the and I think the Krauses were getting a second one. Maybe you know, maybe it's Claire on the can, radar. Maybe Claire can tell us if they they've got a second one because we need more Frenchies. We do. The, the, the world. The Frenchie quota completely dropped. Yeah. yeah. So I've been. Yeah. I've been. But you're right. Really worried to think about, about the like, and that's that's the other thing that he's talking about. Like, imagine. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> did you want to finish that? <laughs> no, I just I, I, I won't be on that show. So do whatever the hell you want to at the damn dogs because okay. I'm gonna miss it. Love dogs, by the way. Have one, just not doing the show. Okay. So I miss the <laughs> the, the Frenchie count. Sorry that dipped. Okay. Carry on. Wow. Carry on. <laughs> okay. I'll, I'll I'll steer us out of here. Um, but Shane Gosper, we will miss you. Um, really we'll glad. And your Frenchies. And your Frenchies. Um, Some of us. <laughs> most of us. And um, just, yeah, it was really great to see that he can have the bounce back that he said that he did and, and prove to mm -hmm. a lot of people that he still belongs in this league. Because when he left Philadelphia, his career was not in that place. And, and he really thrived here. So I'm really I mean, happy. They just, he was a cast off. That was crazy. Yeah. And, Carol and Carolina off. is, a you know, they're in the race. They're in that Definitely race. Definitely a contender. So. Happy for him, like he said, that he gets a chance to compete for a Stanley Cup. So um, our Coyotes fans are going to feel when my Buffalo Sabres knock Ghost in the <laughs> Carolina Hurricane wow. out of the playoffs. What if they get them Ooh. first? I'll watch that saying. series. That'd be a fun series. Unreal. I want to see that series, actually. Tage Against the Machine might be rolling into TD Garden, too. Yeah. That is not a series I or anybody else wants to see. Got to do some work, I Buffalo. don't know. You never know. Gotta, they gotta, you can't they, be losing to Columbus, by the way. Yeah. Lost to Columbus without Deline or... Alex Tuck. I'm hearing excuses. They are excuses, but they're valid yeah. ones. All right. It wouldn't be a post-game show without bringing up the Buffalo Sabres. True. Um, you reported today that they're still working on a Nick Bukestad trade. <laughs> Which, much to uh, Ben Hankins' chagrin. I, was and I almost that walked was, off. That was, that, was a funny, that was a funny tweet from Nick's agent, Ben Hankins, who's a, a really good guy anyway, but that was great. Yeah. Um, yeah. any, anything else you could see happening before Friday? I really don't think so. Maybe, maybe there's a, you know, a, like Petey mentioned, does somebody want a crack at Nick Ritchie? Do they want a crack at another depth defenseman? I don't think, don't think it's going to be Josh Brown. Does, does Even though want, Petey's been beating I know, that some, drum I, did, for I have been, and of course he's not going to play, so yeah. it's not going to be yeah, Josh Brown. Out, so. I don't know. I Troy Stetcher, does anyone want a Troy Stetcher no. for their depth? Uh, yeah, we don't want to lose him. We don't want to lose him either. But, you know, those are, those are trades where you have to look at it and say does it They're make marginal. sense is it yeah. worth it yeah. is it worth it to even do it or you just keep those guys around to keep somewhat of a solid locker room yeah because uh, your, your return dressing on those, room as i'm sometimes corrected by canadians the the the, the, the return on those is going to be real yeah, minimal it's a low pick yeah yeah and i still think there's there's interest if, if a if a player is going to be a free agent there's interest. I mean, people are kicking the tires on everybody and they're thinking how to, does Troy Stetcher fit? And what does Troy Stetcher bring to a team? And well, you know what? Suits. It, it, Great first fashion. Of all, he'll pick up the, the team drip automatically. A dog with a ring. He really coat. likes the word. I do the, like the, the, the word drip and swag. Yeah. But so, but he works hard. He competes. His compete level is extremely high. He's a, he's, he's a dog on a bone when it comes to the puck. And he is going, so if that's something you need, in your lower pair defenseman that you need somebody that's going to... Yeah, yeah. maybe he's Trey Stetcher's guy. Maybe. Yeah. Can you remind me what flop sweat means? I can't remember. <laughs> I've forgotten. I, how do I not... Uh, you should know that. You, no. I had never heard it before you the said word. it. The word. And right. we Google it and it's a thing. What? But I can't remember. It was nervous. It, it was right. nervous, nervous sweat. sweat. Flop sweat. Flop sweat. Listen. It's Which I a, don't have right it's now. It's been a stressful no. week. It really has. It's been a stressful week. I think we'll all feel a sense of relief when the trade deadline comes and goes. And uh, maybe, you know, coincides perfectly with the weekend. Take some OGs to come down from the stress of this one. Um, and the new strawberries and cream Happy Balance gummies are live on the shelves. So check those out Finally. for sure. We are a big fan of the orange creamsicle, the blackberries and cream. Um, and as always, you can find OGs at your local dispensary by checking out ogsbrands.com. Must be 21 or older to enjoy if you're just looking to try them out. They also have microdose gummies, which are really great. Um, it's sleep edition if you need help getting to sleep. They really have everything, um, all sorts of offers. So check out OGs. And yes. if you, you want to 
do stress release in a different way, may I recommend checking out Octane Raceway and Mavericks uh. um, for a little activity, get your mind off of everything, get your mind off the trade deadline, get your mind off work or whatever it may be. Um, and you can book some fun this spring at Octane Raceway and Mavericks with kart racing, virtual reality, laser tag, axe throwing, bowling, arcade, great foods and drinks. They have got it all. Bring in your spring training ticket stub and get a $10 game card. That's awesome. So especially if you're here from out of town for spring training, do that. Or if you're a local, I'm planning to go to spring training game. It's, it's a lot of fun. Uh, so Craig's not going. Are you? No. I can't wait. So bring it to wait. Mavericks. I am. And get a $10 game and card. And if we go to Salt River, we'll be right there. Petey, when the playoffs start. But I've been, I haven't missed a day since spring training started. What what has your childhood team done in your lifetime? The Twins won two World Series, eighty seven exactly. and ninety one. Yeah, but they've been they were a competitive team for a long long time. time. Right? They make yeah. the playoffs every third year. So there are two teams in the city I came from, and they also had two World Series titles in my lifetime, and a lot of years where they just weren't combined. They so to. figure out why maybe not you know, big baseball, a baseball fan. fan. No, there it is. Check out OctaneRaceway.com and Mavericks.com to learn what more. What is Sean laughing about back there, by the way? I want to know. She's trying to read her ads oh, and no, go home. Not we, that. We must have got a good... I was just laughing at Ogie saying Cassian for a first and then all text saying, I'm going to step in and say no. <laughs> wow. <laughs> all text. text. Kenny said, Ogie, come on, for two. Um, blatantly calling him Louis 2.0. Um, <laughs> but this one, all text saying, Bukestad doing what I predicted for Cassian, which was hilarious in its own right. And then a Root said, not playing? <laughs> Um, it was just oh, a no. hilarious. I exchange. love our chat so much. Yeah. Oh my goodness, we appreciate you all. Be all sure to text. like this video, by the way, if you're watching on YouTube, um, <laughs> and if you're listening on audio, be sure to leave us a review and subscribe. Um, okay, let's let's get out of here. We've it's been a long day for all of us. Um, uh, kind of coming. What are there any more emerge pods? Probably not. Right? Okay. Are we we still have a trade deadline show though? Don't we? Yeah, we do. We will be live. Can we push out. that stuff to the trade deadline show? Yeah. Okay. One o'clock. On the trade deadline day, um, we will go live. We'll break down all of the Coyotes trades or lack of further trades. We'll kind of talk about how people can slot up in the lineup. We didn't even mention that Kolya Chanak was recalled from Tucson. Um, obviously, Laurent Defen is in the lineup as well. So which guys can come up to replace the guys that were sent away this week? Um, we'll kind of do some lineup analysis, and we'll talk about some of the other major trades that happen in, around the league as mm. well. There have been some, haven't there? Yeah. yeah, and it'll be nice to just sit and talk about it all. So well, that's <sighs> 1 p.m. Friday, and then we'll be live again for that post-game show, Ghost's first game against his old team in <sighs> his old barn. Unreal. Just a weird coincidence. Should we just roll one show into the other? That's what the Suns did today. Do you want to be live from 1 p.m. Sure. to 11? Sure. You hosting, Petey? Sure. They can sit there and watch me the watch the game. Would be oh my god, seventy five. I got to write a story at some point that day, so oh, yeah, I don't need a break. <laughs> I don't have to do it now. I'll, I'll sit in the more arena. Do you, you and a, a six pack of Kilt Lifter? Yep, and we'll, I'll watch the game right there in the more furniture chair. Love can, it. We can sit there and watch me watch. Stream them. it. I'm all in. Um, all right, let's wrap this up and let's just end with. We'll just go with the punch card to end it all. Um, two left on this line, and then it's the final sprint. <sighs> We're almost there. We're almost there. And once the trade deadline passes, it'll feel like the sprint to the end. Um, and we'll follow along all those little milestones. And or then... a death march. Who knows? I was, I was looking at the Coyotes roster schedule on the NHL app earlier, and you could fit their entire remaining games in the screen. Ah, wow. Wow. Oh, look at that. Things you That's love to see. Thing. That's beautiful. Um, yeah, we're almost over, but it does, doesn't stop for us. We're still live five days a week, no matter what. Got to start talking about the the draft we'll start talking ping league, pong balls ping pong balls There's and a lot. we're gonna start talking about the vote oh yeah in fact that. march 8th one week from today in studio <gasps> team president and ceo javier a gutierrez will be here there you have it we'll have do a we have to for clean him. up again like can I, I be put my feet on up? Like Javier, Javier is always in a suit. Card? Although, although you know what we're gonna talk about with him because shoes. I, 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 yeah, his, his shoe drip. game that is, is <laughs> I'm unreal. A little and I, I think it's all from his son. I know Javi. Sean's missing. Y'all doing this while I'm going. Yeah, his shoes are unbelievable. His shoe game. Yeah, I personally am all for the sneaks with the suits. <laughs> Me love too. It. Like be comfortable. Love it. <laughs> yeah, oh makes my. sense. Why be uncomfortable? Yeah. Agree. In a suit. You're already uncomfortable in the suit, so why have your feet be uncomfortable? Yeah, I, I think it looks sharp. Yep. 
I hope he, he oh, he'll have those for sure. He's wearing yeah. sneaks on that for yeah. sure. Love it. Can't, Can't wait. wait. Can't and we got to clean up and Craig will say no feet on the table. It's like when you're, you're like your, your grandma and grandpa come over and <laughs> your parents all it's, that's him. That, that's me. Anywho, um, everybody, thank you so much for your support today. It really did feel like a, a one big day of pack therapy um, for everybody who was there watching either live or after or listening after to either emergency show or tonight. We appreciate you all immensely and be sure to follow along with everything we do by subscribing to the PHNX Sports YouTube channel and following PHNX Sports uh, across all social media platforms. Lots of stuff going on in Arizona sports world right now. Um, so you can get your content at PHNX Sports and go phnx.com. Become a diehard as well. You can follow each of us on Twitter at Craig S. Morgan, at Leah Merrill, at S. Peters Hockey, at Sean underscore to pause and follow us on Twitter at PHNX underscore coyotes. Have a great rest of your night, everybody, and we'll see you on Friday. Bye.